Mr. Humble Hippie here. We're looking at a variety of uh, things here in the water right now. One of them is called a zombie fish. Well, I guess in theory, I'm assuming it's dead. I don't know if you can see this floating stuff right now. This is called, actually that looks like a piece of bark, but most of this is uh, blue-green algae. And you can actually see it in huge chunks floating in the water. That is 15 or 20 feet out and 10 or feet or deeper of water. This big white thing that you're looking at, that's basically called a zombie fish and it may actually even be alive and it's a carcass of a fish. And um, the way that I understand it, basically the fish, um, as they start dying, the salmon or whatever this is, physically start deteriorating and, and yet they're still alive. And so their brain and their muscle movements stay active but their flesh deteriorates and so fishermen will try and pick them up out of the water for instance and your hand will go right through it because it's deteriorated this fish right now in theory is only moving because of the current of the water but I can assure you it's pretty disturbing whatever I'm looking at. It's either caught up in the moss or it's alive. But what you can't probably see is the bottom part of its body is not there. It's, I'm only looking at basically a skeleton and everything around it as I was also trying to point out is floating chunks of moss of algae, blue-green algae and so the rocks and the blue-green algae I'll go along the shore here to show you a little bit better is actually really deep in the water and that's really bad this is a gold area, by the way. And so this blue-green algae can uh, hurt you and your animals. Even though there are good forms of blue-green algae, spirulina, which is a superfood, This blue-green algae is actually um, messing up the water flow and stuff because of the stagnation of the water. Even though the water's flowing, this water should be 20 feet deeper and higher. And so it allows this algae to build up, which is pretty far out there. And this is really deep water right here. This is one of the deepest parts of the river. So everywhere else where it is a lot more shallow, the algae would cover the shores. Back to this fish here. This is one of the creepiest things I've seen. Now in other areas, there could be carcasses of fish all along the shoreline. And um, it's the end of July. If you can see this little cave over here, but that right there where my finger is, there's water going around it and inside. And the water has carved a cavern right here and into the rocks. And uh, this is again all places where gold
is this is a gold claim, and this is where people would mine for gold. I would say my best guess is that the fish was swimming through the algae. And because it's on its dying days, it physically got caught up in the algae and did not have the ability to even free itself because its bones are exposed and they got caught up in the algae. And so it's just physically tied up in the moss right now. And the force of the current is making it move so it looks like it's swimming. And if the thing frees itself and starts swimming towards me on video, then I guess we will know that this is absolutely the most creepiest thing that most of us have ever seen. Because I assure you, half of its body is gone. But I have talked to fishermen who say that this is a natural phenomenon, phenomenon and uh, they call them the ghost fish. And like I said, they physically will try and pick them up, and they're still alive, but their flesh will just fall apart. And so, in seasons like this, when we have this blue-green algae, it's very, you're warned to stay out of the water, and you're also warned to... Um, not allow your animals to drink it. I mean, this blue-green algae is so thick, and it's, it's, you know, just floating around here in, in the current. I mean, that's pretty far off from the shore here. So it, it's physically able to engulf the whole river. I mean, that's 10 feet down where that fish is. And it's covered in this blue-green algae. So, I mean, these things could easily be dealt with. The government, somebody could just physically go through here and shuffle all the ground. And it would not allow this algae to be um, caught up. Because it's the lack of movement and the lack of moving water. But, you know, uh, you wouldn't want to bathe in that or go swimming in that. You wouldn't want to get that in your body or in your mouth. The video can't possibly pick up all the little teeny itty bits. of It's just floating and fibrous, you know. It, this whole river is just covered of with floating blue green algae and it's only the end of July so this is very bad and again why it's very bad because this is very deep water and this is huge rapids maybe not huge but very loud rapids and fast moving water as you can see the bubbles over there how fast this water is moving and yet you've got all of this buildup of mold on the rocks down there. And so that'll just keep growing to the shore. And other places on the shore, you would definitely see um, that mold would be covered all over the shore. You would not want to walk anywhere near the water. It's so gross. You would be stepping into feet deep of slimy, moldy stuff to try and get to the water. So it is a very serious issue. And again, the federal government, um, because this is their property and they do not maintain it, they only rent and lease out these areas to miners and lumber mills and stuff. And um, so those are the people that have originally destroyed these areas. Um, the miners, the, the lumber people, clear cut these mountains, okay? These mountains... As you can see in the distance, have taller trees. Well, they don't right here. Okay, you can see green, but all of these trees in green are uh, new trees that are only so many years old. 
Uh, the original older growth trees have been cut down a long time ago. And what happens when you do that is it releases the minerals that are in the ground and the dirt and the silt comes down the mountain and it physically affects the river and it adds too many nutrients into the water which then allows green mold and algae which is a plant just like the trees to start growing because it has extra nutrients and so the uh, green blue green algae is actually more a result of and our clogged waterways are actually a result of the lumber people from over a hundred years ago and currently and not due to farmers that actually use nutrients and use the water and on an industrial scale there are in fact many farms on industrial farms that only build their farms on the side of a river in order to make a difference in on a scale of this large you would be dumping tons upon tons of chemicals and nutrients into the river and only a company like Heinz or or you know a big dairy farms and different you know companies and farming industries like that are capable of that much waste um, to be clear a marijuana grower person whom does whatever in their farm you could come down here and do an oil change on this beach it wouldn't affect the environment whatsoever compared to the five trees they cut down you can never you know the world wants to blame people for their mismanagement the world the government wants to blame people for their waste and trash you know pick up your trash don't litter well again you could just carry all the trash you can physically carry and come throw it in this river it would float down the river and be gone you know what will not be gone is the leftover industrial waste that is right here in the river steel piping and, and metal things from mining and uh, bridge building and in other industrial waste. It's sad that our governments, local counties and civic communities literally blame the citizens when we are actually not allowed to come to these areas until they have actually been industrial industrially used. The Department of uh, Interior owns and regulates most public lands that used to be indigenous peoples, the Bureau of Land Management. They lease out these things, again, to miners, to people that have industrial, not people, but businesses that have industrial use. Once that business, that lumber company, cuts down all of these trees, for instance, they pay a hundred dollars a month or so, or a gold mining claim. This property, as far as you, as far as you can see, like say way over there to the crevice, to or to the you know corner of that mountain to like way over there that'd be like hundred and twenty five dollars a year a year I can rent this for hundred and twenty five dollars a year from the federal government I personally don't support the federal government and I think to myself why would I do that how about I don't give you any money because you know who they want to rent that out to for $125 a year? They don't want to rent it out to me so I can make this video of this fish and the algae. They want to and do rent it out to the lumber mill that's going to clear cut this mountain or the gold miner who's going to dig up all of this beach here and take out all these rocks and um, you know, salvage gold and stuff out of the river. So uh, they're only interested in, in things that have what they consider a value, a purpose, a physical use. They don't understand standing here and looking that this is not value. That's not value. There is no value in enjoying or seeing something. You have to physically use things like a tool. That's the thinking and understanding. I sure would like to see this thing swim towards me.
I wonder if I could dislodge it with like a rock. It's so sad, we really don't have natural fish anymore as much as that's hard to explain. We have fish ladders and man-made riverways, and this is supposed to be one of the last um, real rivers. A river is defined by its uh, movement or its length or its um, unblocked free access of running water. And this is supposed to be a, a an untamed, unblocked river. But this is the Trinity River, by the way, on the side of Highway 299. ghost fish.